Hi, this is your professor, Pat Hanahudash again. I'm here today to talk to you about your essay three assignment. This is the most important paper of the course. It's also the longest and the mo one that is the most points. You must do well on this paper. You can't blow it off. You have to complete it. If you get a zero on this because you never turn it in, you won't pass this course, all right? So you must do this. And I know you can. It's a little bit tougher though, because it's much longer. The length is seven to 10 pages. That's a minimum of seven pages, not six and a half, not six and three quarters, but a minimum of seven full pages. Don't go over 10. If you find yourself going over 10 pages, it means that your thesis probably needs to be narrowed down more, that you probably have too broad of a thesis. Again, it must be the normal 11 or 12 point font, Times New Roman or Arial, and normal margins. Okay, we're going to be using the 8th edition of the MLA documentation style to cite your sources. And you will be graded in how well you cite your sources, as well as the types of sources. Now, I have, I have demanded a certain amount of sources and a certain, certain types of sources, and you must meet those instructions. You must do those correctly. If you have the wrong sources, you have the wrong type of sources, the wrong amount of sources, then you will fail for not meeting the parameters of the assignment, just as if you don't have the correct number of pages and so on. I know you can do this. It's going to be complicated, but you can do this. Part of one of the things that we're looking for here, one of the objectives is to help develop and reinforce your ability to do research as well and use those sources as well as write a larger argument. And this is a real argument. Here you're going to be evaluating both the article and arguing whether or not the author is right or the author is wrong. And you must use at least one quote from the article within your essay. You'll probably need to do much more than that. You may summarize and paraphrase two as well, but you must, again, they must be in your own words and sentence structures. Be very careful of that. You don't want to be accused of plagiarism. Avoid logical fallacies. Okay, they are dangerous to your argument. And support your points and refute the opposing viewpoints, that's very important, with evidence from other sources. In other words, you're going to use research material to support your points. Your sources should include, and this is very important, at least one scholarly academic journal. Right, that's a peer-reviewed scholarly academic journal. If you are unsure of what that is, go back and look. I've given you a whole bunch of resources in the learning modules about how to tell if something is a scholarly academic journal, peer-reviewed, okay? Most of the databases will tell you that it is one. It'll say it next to it, but also there are many different characteristics of a scholarly academic journal that, make, that set them apart from popular or trade journals. So be aware of that and make sure that you would carefully use one or at least one article from an academic scholarly journal, one book. I don't care if it's a reference book, but it must be a book. And a dictionary is not part of that. You may not include a dictionary as your one of the uh, one of the books. You may use it and you'd have to cite it if you do, but it does not count as one of these sources. Also, you must use at least one article from one of the library's databases among other sources. So that's an addition to the scholarly academic journal, which you'll probably find on a database. That's probably the easiest place to find it, although you can, of course, find it through Google Scholar and a bunch of other places. But the easiest place to find the academic journal, the academic scholarly peer review journal, is from one of our hack databases. Okay, But you must also have a book that you use as a source and you must also have an article from one of the databases. That doesn't, it could be any kind of an article. It could be another academic one, or it could be a popular article. It could be anything. Um, it doesn't, whatever, it doesn't matter. But it must be from one of the databases, okay? You must use at least five sources. Again, one must be an academic scholarly peer-reviewed journal article, okay? It can be from anywhere. The second must be an article from one of the databases. It can also be an academic scholarly journal article, but it must be a second one then, okay? But it must be from a database. And three, it has to be a book. 
The other two sources can be from wherever. They, you can even use the internet this time around, but be careful. Make sure you evaluate the source carefully. You don't want to use a source like history.com or something. Those are terrible sources. You want something that will make a valid academic source. Okay. Now, the article that you're using in the from the topic, the one that you're evaluating and, argu and arguing for or against, does not count as one of these five sources. You must cite it okay, in your works cited list and in the paper when you use it, but it doesn't count as one of those five sources. So your works cited list must contain at least six sources in it. Okay, Please make sure that you cite that article too. All right. And you may use as however many sources above the five that you want also. I mean, you can, that's great, <laughs> whatever. But those, that's the minimum requirement. Make sure you cite your sources correctly according to the 8th edition MLA documentation style. Make sure that you use indexed and parenthetical citations correctly. I get really annoyed when I see a student at this point not using in-text and parenthetical citations correctly. Um, or works cited ones, but those are a little bit more difficult. I'm a little bit more sympathetic, but not to in-text parenthetical citations. You should know how to do them at this point. Um, and errors in citations will seriously damage your grade, even within the works cited ones. So please make sure that you do them carefully and look up how to do them. If you don't understand how to do them, ask. Either I or our resident librarian here in this course will help you. Again, Wikipedia is not a valid academic resource. You may not use it. You may quote from a dictionary in your paper, but the dictionary does not count as one of your required sources, though you must cite it if you do use it. All right. Again, if you don't have required number of pages, the required types and number of sources and citations, you could fail, you will fail for not meeting the parameters of the assignment. Be careful that you cite correctly. Be careful that you use block quote formatting for any quotation, direct quotation that is over four lines on your paper. If it's under four lines, it's a short quote and you use quotation marks. If it's over four lines on your page, then you must use block quote formatting. I put information in your learning modules on how to do that. It's very important if you, if you can't find what I put in the learning modules, you can always go to the OWL at Purdue, O-W-L at Purdue, um, just owl.com, and that's a great resource for learning how to do citations. Also, ask questions. Go to smartthinking.com, get a tutor there, or to one of the hack tutors in the Learning Commons at any campus, or ask me. We're all here to help you. There's a checklist at the bottom of the essay and a checklist in the learning module to help you figure out whether or not you have met all the requirements for the assignment. Just be careful. Remember, it's important. You don't want to do all this work and then end up failing for not meeting the parameters of the assignment or for plagiarism, okay, even the unintentional plagiarism. Make sure that you do everything correctly. Again, ask questions if you need help. That's what I'm here for. Right? Take care and talk to you later.